This month on Connections. Our travels around Chicagoland begin on North Michigan Avenue, 1,000 feet up, as we visit one of the area's most popular attractions. The Hancock Observatory is our first stop. Next, as we make our way north on the Red Line, we'll tell you about ways to travel safely with children on the CTA. Then, we'll step off the Red Line to take in the sights around two rail stations located in the community of Edgewater. Our destination, the Red Line's Granville and Thorndale stops. The Red Line will take us back south, passing by Wrigley Field. It's just one of the major sporting arenas that the CTA serves. We'll tell you how to get to all of them so you can cheer on your favorite team this fall. Cheering for your favorite runner in the Chicago Marathon? The CTA is a great way to follow along. We'll show you how. As we make our way to the loop on board the number 22 Clark Street bus, get ready for ghosts and goblins this Halloween. The CTA will get you to all the ghoulish fun, including a visit to the Chicago Cultural Center, our last stop. October is a great month to enjoy Chicagoland, so come out and explore on the CTA. Glad you've joined us. I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to Connections, where you can learn all about using the CTA in and around Chicago. The CTA is one of the best ways to see our city. For one of the best views from way up high, just step off the CTA bus along North Michigan Avenue and head to the John Hancock Observatory, our first stop. The John Hancock Building. It's a signature on Chicago's skyline a symbol of the city that's recognized around the world. But the view from the top is something you have to see in person, whether you're visiting or you call the Windy City home. The Hancock Observatory offers truly amazing views and a one-of-a-kind experience from 1,000 feet up. The Hancock Observatory is a special place. This is something where people might just want to put their forehead on the window and look down, and that's an incredible experience. Smile at the tiny buses and cars traveling down Lakeshore Drive or stare in awe at the shores of Michigan and Indiana. But make sure to notice that the offerings inside the observatory are pretty exciting too. The Hancock Observatory underwent a $3 million renovation in 1997. It's no longer the observatory that people in Chicago think of, probably back to that second or first grade field trip. Today, visiting the top of Big John offers interesting and interactive ways to learn about Chicago. From the sound scope that tells the story behind what you're seeing to the 80-foot history wall that traces Chicago's past. One notable feature is the new skywalk for open-air viewing. We took out 16 nine-foot plate glass windows and replaced them with mesh so people can feel why we're called the Windy City. The Hancock Observatory is open every day from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m and the CTA can get you there. Here's a look. People come here in a good mood, but they leave in even a better mood. Times have changed. Outside threats have forced us all to be more aware of our surroundings. When you ride the CTA, it's important to know that your safety is the CTA's top priority. But remember, you can do your part by keeping your eyes open. And if you see something, say something. The safety and security of customers and employees is a top priority of the CTA. CTA employees are specially trained to assist customers in an emergency situation where safety and security are concerned. Working with Chicago Police and Fire Departments and the City's Office of Emergency Management Communication, CTA personnel are dedicated to keeping the system safe for everyone. Our employees are very well trained. We have very close contact with other emergency responders. And uh, so the best advice is remain calm follow the directions that are given to you by CTA employees and uh, don't uh, do something different than that. 
In some instances, it may be necessary to clear customers from a subway train, elevated train, rail station, or bus due to a mechanical problem, service incident, or as a precaution if safety is threatened. If you're on the CTA system during any type of emergency, here are some important guidelines you should remember. First of all, customers should remain calm. You can be assured that the CTA is in direct contact with the control center and emergency personnel. Secondly, unless otherwise instructed, stay inside the vehicle. And finally, listen for instructions. If you're on a train, stepping out onto the tracks is dangerous. The CTA needs time to shut down power to the third rail and stop train traffic. Do not evacuate the train uh, until you're instructed to do so, and do it only in the way you're instructed to do it. Never step on any rails, because that's a very dangerous environment. In the event that customers must exit a bus quickly, emergency exit instructions are listed on bus windows, ceiling escape hatches, and doors. If it is ever required that customers clear a train that is not at a station, rail operators are fully trained to assist customers in exiting through the subway or elevated track. In addition, Chicago police and fire personnel are trained to assist customers in exiting a train. We go through a series of drills, practice sessions uh, with the city uh, personnel, and so we are equipped for that. Remember that inside all CTA trains, emergency procedures are posted at each exit. And every rail car also has an intercom system that can be used in the case of an emergency to contact the rail operator. A blue light is located above each intercom to help customers easily locate it on the train. If you're at a rail station, a customer assistant or security guard is on duty at times that service operates and trained to assist customers if a station needs to be cleared. In his role as Vice President of CTA Security, former FBI agent Pat Daly also oversees the Control Center, which is the hub of CTA communications. The Control Center operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and is the CTA's direct link to the city's 911 center. Well, all these people are veteran CTA employees and they're dedicated. First, they have to find out what exactly is the emergency, because not all things may be emergencies, so they're really fact-getters. And once they get the facts, then they're the solution to the problem. When it comes to security, customers can also do their part by reporting any suspicious behavior or unattended packages. Even if you see smoke, notice an odd smell, or witness anything unusual, tell a rail or bus operator or a customer assistant immediately, or call 911. If you think there's something that requires our attention, let us know about it. Let us know about it right away. We have direct connection to the police department and direct connection to our rail control system. And our employees are trained on how to deal with the situation. So don't be bashful, let us know about it. Remember, not only is the CTA ready to respond to an emergency, customers should also be aware of their surroundings and prepared if an incident ever occurs. We need the help of our employees and our customers to add to our security. And that's why we say, if you see something, say something. Riding the CTA is exciting. It's important to make the experience fun, but also safe. That's why parents and guardians should be aware of a few simple rules before taking children on board. Taking children on board the CTA can be an adventure for kids and parents alike. And the CTA wants your experience to be fun, but more importantly, safe. The CTA offers several guidelines and tips to help you travel safely with children. To start, make sure your children are beside you at all times. Small children will need help going through the turnstile, they need help going up the escalator, and certainly waiting on the platform for the train. When entering a CTA rail station, there are a few things to keep in mind. Well, with very small children, we recommend they don't go through the turnstiles, that instead they find the attendant at the station, either a customer assistant or a security guard, who will let them through the accessible gate. Always use an elevator if your child is in a stroller. If the station does not have an elevator, fold up the stroller and carry your child up or down the escalator. And another safety precaution when you're on the train platform, stand back. The trains are going to be coming. The platform does have an edge, and you have to make sure children don't get too close to it. 
when a parent has the child in a stroller, we recommend that the stroller be facing in parallel to the uh, platform. In fact, with the CTA's open stroller policy on buses and trains, parents no longer have to remove their children from the stroller. And parents are finding this much more convenient. Remember not to have the children standing in the seat. Uh, we want to have them sitting down at all times so that they're safe. If the train makes an, an abrupt stop, the child doesn't fall off the seat. Never walk from car to car when riding the train. This is for emergencies only. And if you ever need to talk to the rail operator in an emergency, remember to look for the blue light. That's where you can find the emergency intercom, which is directly linked to the train operator. Similar precautions apply to CTA buses. When boarding, make sure your children walk on first so you can see exactly where they're going. Have them sit with you or as close to you as possible. And make sure to keep an eye out at all times. On board the bus, it's just, it's important for parents to remember that the bus is moving and it's in traffic. Also, remember to keep strollers and any other belongings clear of the aisle. Whether you travel by bus or train, remember never leave your children unattended. It's your responsibility to supervise them at all times. But should you ever get separated, ask a CTA employee for assistance. If you'd like more information about how to safely travel on the CTA with children, pick up a Traveling Safely with Children brochure at any rail station, visit the CTA's website, transitchicago.com, or call 1-888-YOUR-CTA to have one mailed to you. The CTA welcomes children. We want them to be safe. We want them to get used to riding public transportation because then as adults, they'll keep doing it and public transportation is better for everybody. The CTA has 144 rail stations and more than 12,000 bus stops. That's a lot of neighborhoods to explore. And that's what we're about to do here. Our destination, the Red Line's Granville and Thorndale stations. When you step off at either the Red Line's Granville or Thorndale Station, you'll be entering the neighborhood of Edgewater. It's located on Chicago's north side. Today, about 62,000 Chicagoans call it home. If you like to shop, head to Broadway Avenue, one of the area's main thoroughfares. It's a great place to hunt for antiques, especially along a one-block stretch just steps from the Red Line's Granville stop. We have a big collection of Columbian Exposition and Century of Progress, as well as Chicago artifacts. The Edgewater Antique Mall not only specializes in Chicago memorabilia, but in Art Deco, Mission, and mid-century modern furnishings. There's vintage clothes and jewelry, and if you miss the bygone days of Ma Bell, pick up an antique telephone. I think if you name it, we've probably got it. Walk south on Broadway one block and you'll find another antique destination, the Broadway Antique Market. We specialize in basically mid-century modern, um, though we will have uh, Victorian arts and crafts pieces. Um, but our strongest suit is probably our deco through 50s, 60s, and a little bit of 70s. In the mood for a great burger? Check out Moody's Pub. Just steps west of the Red Line's Thorndale stop. Here you'll find the signature Moody Burger. Voted best in the city by the Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun-Times, and The Reader. Get into the spirit of Halloween with a visit to another neighborhood watering hole, Old St. Andrew's Inn. Rumor has it the place is haunted by the ghost of previous owner Frank Giff. On the east side of Broadway, on this same stretch, you'll find the city's largest indoor park. The Broadway Armory spans the entire block. Uh, historically, the Park District has been a recreation and leisure type programs, but here at Broadway Armory, we not only offer that, but we offer some specialty programs, such as photography, we offer yoga, we order sports and recreation, and we have arts and crafts for the kids. So we have also partnerships um, with the Flying Trapeze Group, the Flying Guyonas. That's right, the Flying Guyonas, a family of seventh generation circus performers, take up residence at the Broadway Armory, except during the summer months when they perform and practice on the lakefront. The troupe offers trapeze classes for all ages and abilities. So the next time you're traveling on the CTA's Red Line, consider stepping off at Granville or Thorndale and get ready to experience everything Edgewater has to offer.
about halfway through our route on our way to our last stop, the Chicago Cultural Center. Baseball fans know the Red Line well. It provides direct access to both Major League ballparks. But no matter what your favorite sport is, the CTA can get you to your team's home game. All it takes is a little basic training. No matter what sport you call your favorite, Chicago is where you'll find all the action. Chicago is the best sports town in the nation. And Chicago sports fans, of course, are the best sports fans in the country. And Chicago sports fans have a home field advantage when it comes to getting to the game. It's so much easier and economical to leave your car at home, take transit. It's good for the environment. It's good for your nerves. It saves all that hassle. And it's a lot of fun, too. The CTA offers additional service on many of its regularly scheduled routes to help sports fans cheer on their home team. On game days, the CTA also puts special express buses into service to accommodate large crowds. We provide additional buses. Uh, we extend the hours as necessary in order to get people home. And we also provide longer trains uh, with longer hours as well in order to meet the demand. So we're very well equipped to handle large crowds. Cubs fans headed to Wrigley Field can take the number 22 Clark bus or the number 152 Addison bus. For night, weekend, and holiday games, hop on bus number 154. That's the Wrigley Field Express from the DeVry parking lot. Or if the rail system is more convenient for you, jump off at the Red Lines Addison stop. Wrigley Field is right next door. Rooting for the White Sox? Take the Red Line South to the 35th Street Sox Station. U.S. Cellular Field is just a short walk west. You can also take the Green Line to the 35th IIT stop. From there, it's a short walk or a short bus ride on the number 35, 35th Street bus heading west. If basketball or hockey is your game, check out the Chicago Bulls and Blackhawks at the United Center by taking the Blue Line's Forest Park branch to the Medical Center station. To get there by bus, board either the number 20 Madison, the number 50 Damon, or the number 19 United Center Express, which runs only on game and event days and runs from Michigan Avenue and Madison downtown. The Chicago Wolves hockey team and the DePaul Blue Demons basketball team call the Allstate Arena home. To get there, just take the Blue Lines O'Hare branch to the Rosemont stop, then pick up pace bus number 221 and you're there. With football season kicking into high gear, getting to Soldier Field is as easy as 1-2-3. The red, orange, and green lines all stop at Roosevelt Station. From there, you can hop on the number 12 Roosevelt bus or just walk four blocks east to Soldier Field. Or you can take the number 146 Inner Drive Michigan Express or the number 128 Soldier Field Express, which directly serves customers coming into Ogilvy and Union Stations. It's uh, convenient because uh, it was easy for us to pick up the bus right outside Union Station. It was easy for us to park because the traffic was emptying out in that area of the city. And it was air conditioned. We liked that as well. The CTA is great. Uh, we can't uh, tell you enough about how well it works here at Soldier Field because of the location here on the lakefront. Whether people are using the L system and coming off the uh, train station at Roosevelt and State Street or whether people are coming by bus. The ridership, as we continue to track it over the years, continues to grow on the CTA because it's so convenient to use to get to Soldier Field. It's also an ideal way to check out the new Soldier Field, which isn't just for football. The newly renovated stadium also plays host to the Chicago Fire soccer team, international soccer tournaments, concerts, and a number of other family-friendly events. It is a brand new state-of-the-art facility. It has the jumbotrons, it has more washrooms, concession stands, everyone has an individual seat with a cup holder now, so it's really a fan-friendly facility. To plan your next trip to see your favorite team, just pick up a CTA map. CTA makes it especially easy for the sports fan to figure out where they want to go and how to get there. Take your system app and open up to your sports connection. This will give you all the information you need to know about how to get to your favorite sporting venue. Event service begins two hours before game time and continues two to three hours afterward, so you can take your time both coming and going. Save time and above all, save hassles. Ride with our team to get to your team. 
CTA is not only a great way to get to all the games, it's a great way for people to track runners competing in one of Chicago's most exciting annual sporting events, the LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon. It's just one more way the CTA is keeping people on the move. The LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon is one of the premier running events in the world. The popularity on a local, regional, and national level has just become phenomenal. This year we have 40,000 participants, which is our cap participation. We filled that number in a record rate this year. The start and finish lines are in Grant Park, but the course takes runners and spectators on a world-class tour throughout the city. The marathon's unique route and easy accessibility for spectators are what makes this race so special. We travel through some of the greatest neighborhoods in the city and it's a great experience for people that have never been here or people who have been here that live here. They get to travel through some great neighborhoods and see some great people. A great way for spectators and family members to cheer on their runners is by taking the CTA to spots along the race route. Just pick up this handy spectator and transportation guide to learn how. The Spectator and Transportation Guide actually has a map of the course and it also showcases the key CTA stations that you'll be able to get on and off throughout the day to follow your runners. Spectators like Pat Maynard and Joe Nemec have used the CTA for the past few years to follow their friends and loved ones on the course. And they'll be doing it again this time around. It's the fastest way. You certainly cannot get around as fast in a car. Just getting around from point to point is really easy. You get to see them at the front end, at Randolph when they start off. Then we head down south to uh, Cermak in Chinatown, which is another great area. We watch them there. We come back up on the red line, and then we see them go into the finish line at mile 26. You're on the train with all these other people, you know, who are just there to, to root on their friends and loved ones and stuff. And so you see all these other people who are sharing this common experience, and it's really cool. The Spectator Guide is available at Starbucks and at the Health and Fitness Expo held on the two days before the race, and at various key CTA viewing stations on the course. The best way to ride the CTA during the marathon? Purchase a one-day pass. It offers unlimited rides for only $5, so you can get on and off as many times as you wish. Every year, the CTA also shows its support for the marathon through its volunteer staffers, advertising campaigns, rerouting alerts, and cross-promotion on both the CTA and Marathon's websites. CTA wants to show its support of the marathon and also the city of Chicago. You can ride the CTA to view your runners and also to travel through the diverse neighborhoods of the city of Chicago. The LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon's partnership with the CTA has been a great relationship and it's really enhanced the event and enhanced the event day experience. Whether you're a participant or a spectator, the LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon offers a wonderful interactive day for everyone and the CTA can be your guide. I really tell everybody, just go and see it. Even if you're not in it, even if you don't know anybody that's in it, just go and see it. It's great. Throughout the month of October, prepare to be scared. You can take part in a number of Halloween festivities planned during the month, including the CTA's Haunted L. So to make the rounds to all the fun, just hop on board the CTA, helping to keep your Halloween plans on track. Get ready for thrills and chills around Chicago this month. The city of Chicago is leading the way with its annual Chicagoween celebration. Daily Plaza becomes Pumpkin Plaza, where thrill seekers will discover a haunted village, pumpkin decorating, and much more. We have face decorating, storytelling, uh, Midnight Circus will perform um, throughout the day with various circus acts. Plus special appearances from the stars of the Broadway musical Wicked, now on stage in Chicago. Celebrity cast members will have their own tent on hand for face painting, storytelling, and singing. We're also offering the um, Halloween Happening State Street Parade on the 22nd, starting at 12 p.m. It's a small parade with a processional led by a couple of the Wicked Witches um, from the cast. Chicagoween festivities run from October 14th through the 31st, and admission is free. The spirits of Halloween will tell tales aboard the Haunted L train this season as the Mayor's Office of Special Events, the Chicago Office of Tourism, and the CTA have teamed up to bring you ghostly rides around the loop. You enter the Haunted L 
and there's going to be a skit created around Halloween. Those who dare can pick up tickets for the Haunted L at the Chicago Cultural Center's Visitor Information Center at 77 East Randolph. The train runs October 20th through the 22nd and the 27th through the 29th. Tickets are free, but it's first come, first serve, so come early. Now hop on the museum campus bus number 146 and dive into the spooky seas at the Shedd Aquarium. Many families are looking for fun, safe, and educational opportunities for um, their kids. And we think Shedd Aquarium is the perfect place to come on Halloween for our Spooky Seas evening event and overnight programs. That's right. You can sleep overnight at the Shedd. They should bring sleeping bags and other sleeping types of equipment, and they uh, sleep right in the galleries, right in front of some of the exhibits, and it's a, a rare opportunity for you to see the animals up close all night. If you can handle such a fright night, you can even get up close and personal with a creepy African bullfrog, a very hairy tarantula, and a super scary red-tailed boa. To find out more about the Shed Spooky Seas event, call 312-692-3333. Time to board Navy Pier bus number 124 for Navy Fear, where two new adventures are unfolding. The new Demons of the Deep is actually recommended for children ages 9 and above. We really tried to gear it this year more towards teenagers, so it's really going to be exciting and very scary. We also have the Ghostly Gardens at Skyline Stage, and that is geared more towards people with children under the ages of 8. That's what we call kind of our scare-free zone, where you'll find a kiddie train and inflatable games and activities for children. To find out more about Navy Fear, call 312-595-5225 or log on to NavyPier.com. The City of Chicago can lead you to more than 70 family-friendly Halloween activities this year. To learn more, visit cityofchicago.org forward slash special events or call 312-744-3315. So get out and enjoy the holiday and remember to take the CTA. The Halloween fun doesn't end there. Be sure to add one more stop to your itinerary, the Chicago Cultural Center. It's our last stop. One spooky stop you may want to make this month is at the Chicago Cultural Center. The Cultural Center celebrates Halloween weekend in style with a day of fun for the entire family at the Hallowed Halls Festival. A popular tourist destination, the Cultural Center was built in 1897 to be the Chicago Public Library and a war memorial. It later became known as the People's Palace. That actually was a phrase that came up soon after the building was constructed. I think the sense was that it, it is such a spectacular building. And when people came into it, they felt like they were in a palace. But at the same time, it was free and it was available to them and it was their library. Of course, any day of the week there is something going on at the Chicago Cultural Center, as more than 800 programs celebrating the arts are held here each year. In October, the Cultural Center celebrates Chicago Artists Month, where painters, sculptors, photographers, and printmakers will debut their work. So mark your calendar and plan on stopping by the Chicago Cultural Center in October. And remember, the CTA will get you there. We'll take you there next month for the start of another trip around Chicagoland on the CTA. I'm Dale Rivera. See you in November on Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area.